I'm Sean Burke, Permit Services Manager for the Community Development Department. This is our first in a series of Lunch and Learns entitled Guide to Permits Workshop. I'd like to welcome you to the City of Sacramento Community Development Department's Guide to Permits Workshop. Jumping right in, this is a flow chart illustrating the process one would go through when submitting for a residential project. If it was determined that your project was minor in nature and did not fall within a design review or preservation district, and you could comply with the exemptions pr provided on a form, you would be routed directly to the building queue without having to go through the planning counter staff. We have several queues to serve you. We have an express queue that would provide an expedited uh, turnaround time if you had questions or were resubmitting for a project that was already in for review, that could happen in that queue. We have one for housing and dangerous building cases, one for minor permits, for sign applications, and the building queue are for those projects that are larger in scope and nature and would require plans for submittal. If your project does happen to fall within a designated design review area and the work consists of any exterior changes, modifications, or additions, including window and door changeouts, any re-roofs, or work on the heating and air conditioning systems, a design review or preservation review would be required. Depending on the the extent of the work, in some cases a planning application would be required. Otherwise, if, there, if it's minor in nature, there are planning exemption forms that could be completed at the counter and you could proceed to the building department. If you do wish to see if your project falls within a historic district, you can go onto the City of Sacramento's website under CDD Resources Maps and you can look at the historic map there. Two common questions are, when is a permit required and when is a permit not required? Well, the building code makes plain that building permits are required for any new construction, alteration, any repairs, moves, and demolition of buildings and or structures. The building code also has a list of exempt scopes of work that would not require a permit. One-story detached accessory buildings not exceeding 120 square feet, such as tool and storage sheds and playhouses, fences that are not over 7 feet in height, oil derricks, just in case you were thinking about installing one in your backyard, would not require a permit, decks not exceeding 200 square feet in area that are not more than 30 inches above grade at any point, are not attached to a dwelling and do not serve the exit door required by Section R311.4. Painting and papering and similar finished work would not require a permit. Temporary motion picture and television and theater stage sets and scenery. Most window awnings and prefabricated swimming pools that are less than 24 inches deep. Now please keep in mind that Plumbing and electrical and mechanical permits may be required for some of those exempted items, such as a storage shed that's 120 square feet or less, and yet electrical was being installed, that electrical work would require a permit. And also keep in mind that setbacks must be maintained even when permits are not required, and we would strongly recommend that you meet with the planning staff to determine what those setbacks are so that those can be complied with. I would now like to discuss the matter of minor permits and to elaborate on those. These are permits which do not require any supporting documents such as drawings or structural calculations. As most will attest to any type of ownership, maintenance and repair is a standard feature. And that's no different when owning a home, and it has been the city's intent and desire to try to simplify and streamline the process of pulling such permits 
to ensure that the work that's being done and the equipment that's being installed is being done so in accordance with the current building codes and per the manufacturer specifications. We have a list of types of work that qualify as minor permits. Re-roofing, replacing waterproof barrier or sheet lining, heating and air conditioning units, otherwise referred to as HVAC or HVAC systems, water heaters, minor repairs, free plumbing of a house, upgrading an electrical service panel, rewiring of an entire house, replacing sewer line uh, or making repairs, water service repairs or replacements, kitchen remodels that do not involve any structural changes, and the same is true for bathroom remodels with no structural changes, and like-for-like like window change-outs. As projects become more complex, they require supporting documents such as plan drawings, structural calculations, energy efficiency reports, and trust calculations. Those types of projects could fall into the categories of additions, remodels involving structural modifications to a structure, garage conversions, typically in those scenarios it's converting it to habitable space, patio covers or patio enclosures and space conversion such as taking an existing attic space and converting that into habitable or living area. Now there are some causes for delays within the process and the following are a list of probably the most frequent causes for delays. Window changeouts, uh, re-roof when the material that's being installed is a change from what is currently existing. The same would be for siding changes of material. And then also if the work taking place is uh, within a landmark structure or in a historic district. We thought it would be helpful to have a brief discussion regarding field inspections. It's important that inspections are scheduled prior to any work being concealed. So in the event that uh, a water line or sewer line was being replaced, it would be critical that, that work was inspected prior to the, it being covered uh, by dirt, or if any electrical or plumbing work was being done within existing walls, that that work would be inspected prior to sheetrock. It's also important that uh, inspections are scheduled by 6 p.m. at least one business day prior to the inspection. So in the event that you wanted a Monday inspection, that in inspection request would need to be made by 6 p.m. on Friday. Uh, and likewise, if an inspection was desired on Wednesday, to call at least by Tuesday afternoon at 6 p.m. And it's also important to ensure that the inspection area is ready when the inspector arrives. By way of future reference, for your convenience, we have a couple of email addresses in the event that you have questions for planning or building. Planning, you can email them at planning at cityofsacramento.org. And for building, you can email us at easypermit at cityofsacramento.org. The city also has a website that is rather extensive in terms of information that uh, would be helpful when wanting to submit for a particular project to be able to determine what those fees might be, the requirements for plans and supporting documents, and that email is provided here for you. You're also welcome to come to the public counter for that informational material in the event that uh, you don't have internet access. Lastly, we wanted to bring to your attention that there are appointments available to the public on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8.30 a.m. to 2.33 and 3.30 p.m. Appointments can be scheduled. Those are primarily for picking up uh, plans that are ready to be issued brand new submittals, or if you just had questions. You can schedule those appointments by calling 916-808-5838, or you can email at cdd-appointments at cityofsacramento.org. 
Thank you for viewing this Guide to Permits workshop. I hope you have found it helpful, and if you do have any questions, feel free to contact us. And please do check the city's website for other Lunch and Learn topics. <laughs>